and welcome to this week's Lab at Home vlog. This week's vlog is a continuation of last week's vlog, so I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what happened in last week's in case you uh, haven't watched it yet. So I picked leaves from seven plants in my garden and house. I then extracted DNA from those leaves using two different DNA extraction methods. One was the Hotshot DNA extraction kit and the other was the Proteinase K DNA extraction kit. And then I ran two different PCRs um, which used different primer sets. So they were the RBCL primer set and the MATK primer set. And those two commonly used as plant barcodes. So the idea was to see if I could get the DNA extractions to work and then whether I could get the PCRs to work. So excitingly, um, both the DNA extraction uh, methods worked and the PCRs worked. So last week I ended up with quite a lot of amplicons and I sent them off for sequencing. And now the results have all come back from the sequencing facility and I'm going to talk you through them in hopefully an interesting and not too technical way. But if you do have any questions, please comment them below this video and I'll get back to you. I sent the amplicons off in two batches to be sequenced. The first batch using the RBCL primers and the second batch using the MACK primers just to keep everything separate and to avoid confusion. So if you've um, seen any of our previous video blogs about sequencing, you'll recognise this. This is what the results look like when they come back from the sequencing facility. So just really briefly, um, reminder that the H is for the DNA extractions done using the Hotshot extraction kit and P is for the Proteinase K extraction kit DNA extractions. Um, the point one refers to the one in 10 dilutions, which were just overall far more successful at amplifying than the concentrated DNA extractions. And um, basically black in the QS in CRL means it worked. Red means there was a problem. So overall, it's looking pretty good. And the ones that are in red, I will come back to later. So then when I uh, get the results back, I copy them one by one, the gene sequence into uh, the BLAST website uh, run by NCBI. I put it in the box at the top left. Um, we do have more detailed instructions on how to do this on the Bento Lab website. So if you are interested, please do check that out. Uh, then I click Blast and it comes back with the closest hits to the sequence that I've blasted against the database. Plant one, I thought was borage that I picked a leaf from in my garden. And this was the RBCL result. So the top result for, was for Pentaglottis sempervirens. The second was for Borigo officinalis. And the, second, the third, sorry, was Trachistemon orientalis, um, all from the Borage family. So um, I'm intrigued now, actually, because I did think it was Borigo officinalis. However, it could also be the top hit. So I'm going to reserve judgment on that uh, because without it flowering, I couldn't actually be sure. So the second plant that I temporarily forgot the name of in the previous vlog, but uh, remembered later that it was cyclamen, the RBCL sequencing confirmed that with three different types of cyclamen. Uh, I don't have any record of which one it actually is. Looking at the leaves, I would agree with the top hit, which is the cyclamen hedrifolium. So that looks good to me. I'm pretty happy with those results. Third guess was uh, Primrose. Pretty confident about that. We're all quite familiar, I think, with buying Primroses from the garden centre. So then the RVCL results for that. Um, the top hit was Primula veris, which I disagree with because that's cow slip, and I definitely didn't buy cow slip. So it's actually the second hit on this one that I agree with, which is the Primula polyanthus. And then the third hit was this um, Sredinskaya grandis, 
which uh, when you Google that one, that also has the genus um, primula. So again, the genus is quite consistent. Um, it's just the species name. I would actually agree more with the second hit on this one than the first. OK, so the fourth plant that I picked a leaf from was salvia, and I actually had kept the tag for this one. So it's salvia hotlips, and the name for that is salvia gemensis. An interesting one um, using the RBCL sequence again. None of those were gemensis. They're all the salvia genus, which is excellent. Um, and I'm actually wondering whether it's because no one's actually sequenced uh, salvia hotlips before, and therefore the sequence isn't in the database for mine to match to. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it came up with the closest matches that it had in the database. Plant five was the first of the house plants. Um, we're looking at a spider plant here. And again, the RBCL got three different variations of spider plants as the top hits. So genus again, Chlorophytum across all three. I'm happy with that. I'm convinced that that's correct. Bringing in the MACD-K sequencing results at this point, they worked for the plants one, two, four and five very well. But actually, when I blasted them, they weren't really very similar to what I thought the plant was. There was maybe a top hit that agreed with the RBCL results, but then the other top hits were really not close at all. Moving on to plant six, my guess was it was a fern. The uh, RBCL result came back identical to the salvia. Oops, that was a pipetting error on my part. Actually, I must have pipetted uh, the wrong DNA in there. So I apologise, that's a shame. And the sequencing results failed for the mat k So we don't know what it is because none of the sequencing actually worked for that one. And then finally, I picked some leaf from this plant, which I think to be some sort of bamboo. Unfortunately, both of the sequences failed for the RBCL primers. And the MACK result consistently came back with this genus of Draceaena, which it could be um, if you have a Google of those. Uh, they look sort of like it, but not exactly. And if I'm honest, based on the results that the MACK primers came back for, for the other plants that I was confident what they are, I probably wouldn't trust this one. So actually, going forward, I'm not going to recommend that we uh, stock the MACK primers for our sequencing workflow for plants. However, I am going to recommend that we stock the RBCL ones. So those are going to be available soon. And if you fancy having a go at this yourself, please check out our DNA barcoding workflow on the Bento Lab website. As ever, Thanks for listening.